to get through this life, didn't he? He wants us to know what his perfect will is for our lives. So he gave us this thick, thick book, and there's an awful lot of information in this book, isn't it? You know, in the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about binding and loosening because it, it's so important because Jesus told the disciples, he said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven that you whatever you bind on this earth will be bound. Whatever you loose will be loose. So it's very important that we understand the binding and loosening because it's a spiritual battle we're, that we're involved in. The Bible speaks of the of the walk that we have on this earth as a spiritual battle because we all know that we have an enemy, don't we? And we all know that that, that enemy is very, very skillful at what he does, but he can't get a, a foothold on us if we know the word of God, can we? Because the Bible says that we have the word of God, which is a two-edged sword, doesn't it? Piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. So we have the word of God that, that rightly divides everything that's going on in our life. And when we were studying about binding and loosening, the very next lesson we studied about was, was honoring God. See, everything that we do has to be about God Almighty. When you wake up in the morning, when them little eyeballs pop open, what should it be about? Good morning, Lord. Thank you for another day to serve you. Thank you for another opportunity to be able to come before your throne, to worship, to glorify. And everything that we do should be an act of worship, shouldn't it? When we go to work, when we go to play, if we're working on something, make it an act of worship, isn't it? Because everything is about God Almighty. God Almighty says, he says, I share my glory with nobody. He says, I'm not sharing my glory. One thing I'm very particular about is the glory that you give to, to, the, to the Father above. And so we studied about honor. If you remember, Jesus met the woman at the well, and he was just making like a little small talk, if you remember, about water and about vases. And she said, you don't have anything to get water with. And Jesus said, well, I'll give you living water. Remember the whole dialogue? And then all of a sudden, Jesus flips the light switch onto the spirit world, didn't he? And then he said to the woman, he, he left her know about her five husbands that she has. And then she realized that he wasn't just a normal person, that he must be from heaven above. And from there, the story carries us into a two-day revival where the Holy Spirit wanted to let the Samaritans know that God Almighty loved them just as much as he loved anybody else and that there was a way that they could come before the Father once Jesus died on the cross that they could come and be saved and have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And then we've seen the story where Jesus came into his hometown and remember Jesus wanted to do miracles but he didn't get honored. They didn't recognize him as the son of God. They recognized him as the son of Joseph. And that, and that just took the power because there's no faith in knowing Joseph or knowing that you're a son of Joseph. There's no faith in that. The faith comes from knowing God and knowing that Jesus is the son of God and knowing your rightly, right, right position. So that's why the, the word of God is so important because God wants us to understand that he has ways of doing business and his way of doing business is to honor him with our mouth, isn't it? And, and to know what the word of God says. The Bible says to walk by faith, doesn't it? So we're going to pick up where we left off with the honor and all that there and, and, and the way we studied about the principalities and the powers of evil. And, but what we want to talk about today is our thoughts the thoughts of our heart. Now, when the, the Bible refers to us as we are a spirit, it says we have a soul, which is our mind, our will, and our, and our thoughts, right? And it's our flesh, okay? So we're three parts, spirit, soul, and body, aren't we? So we want to deal with, with how the enemy attacks our thoughts because if our thoughts aren't right, if the enemy's attacking our thought life, What's going to happen to your relationship with God? What's going to happen to your faith? What's going to happen to your obedience? You know, if the enemy can convince you that your relationship with God is not important, it's going to affect your relationship with God Almighty, isn't it? You know, and we studied a couple months ago about our relationship with God, how God the Father sits on the throne. Jesus is at his right hand, making intercession for us. He's our high priest praying for us and that the Holy Spirit is sent to live inside of us and to help us on this side of heaven 
perform all the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the help. Remember, the most important thing in the Bible is the great commission that Jesus gave us, didn't he? he Jesus said in Mark 16, he wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. He wants us to go lay hands on the sick. He says they'll recover. He said cast out demons. They'll go. He says pray in your new tongue, in your new prayer language when you get baptized by the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus gave us everything. He equipped us. Now just think about the disciples right after Jesus died. If they would have went into a city and just set up a big tent and started preaching, there's probably not a whole lot was going to happen, was there? I mean, the Holy Spirit would probably be there, but who would go? But suppose they did like Jesus did, and, and, and I like to think that Jesus started every single day with a miracle. He either opened the eyes of the blind, or he caused a lame man to walk, or he caused a deaf guy to hear, he, or he multiplied the bread. I think that every day Jesus started his day with a miracle. So what did he have? He had the people's attention, didn't he? He had a healing line. After he preached to them and talked to them, he healed their body. So the disciples learned that from Jesus, didn't they? So when they, if they had tents and things, when they set them up, what did they do? They started out with miracles, didn't they, and signs and wonders. Now they have the people's attention, don't they? And it made it very, very easy to preach the gospel. But that's what Jesus said to do. Go into the cities and lay hands on the sick. They will get healed. It's a promise that comes from heaven above. If, if Jesus doesn't do that promise, what makes you think that he's going to do the promise of, of your salvation, of writing your name in the land? He's going to do everything this book says that he'll do, doesn't it? And that's the, the neat thing about it. So we have to understand that we have to overcome the enemy. We have to overcome the powers of darkness in, in our lives, in our daily walk. But, but how do we deal with the evilness of the, of the enemy? Well, the first thing you do is you make sure that you're what? That you're born again. When you get born again, Jesus comes and lives inside of your spirit, doesn't he? The Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world, right? And it's very important that we have a personal relationship with Jesus. You know, life is so exciting because if you wake up in the morning and Jesus is on your mind and Jesus is your goal for that day and everything that you say and do is about Jesus, you know, and sometimes we, we, we stumble in life. The Bible says, be not weary with well-doing, but sometimes we have to take care of the physical things and they sometimes wear us down. But if we take Jesus with us, no matter what we're going through, it's going to work out, isn't it? And it, it doesn't always seem like it's going to work out. I know Dusty's got a hard job over at the campground. He's the, he's the main uh, maintenance man, aren't you, Dustin? And, and Dustin has to, anything that breaks, they expect Dustin to fix. And he has to fix the water, and he has to fix the sewer, and then he has to fix this. And he's continuously fixing things. But you see, if you take Jesus along on the, on, on the journey, it makes it all fun, doesn't it? So it's very, very important, no matter what we do in life, that we take Jesus along on the journey. So that's part of having that relationship. You start your day out with prayer. You say, Lord, I, I start this day out for you. I'm going to live this day for you. And no matter what happens, we come against them principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness. We have authority over the dark darkness, don't we? Jesus gave us authority over the powers of darkness. So therefore, everything that happens is going to worship and glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <clears throat> but you see, the key word I just said was Lord. We have to make sure that Jesus is the Lord of our life. <coughs> Excuse me. And not, that, not, not let the world, and that's what we're going to look at now, because God Almighty was very, very firm with what he said about this world. And he said that we better not be friends with that world because he said, if you're a friend with the world, you're an enemy of God. So we have to make sure that we're born again. We got to make sure we got that relationship. We got to make sure that we keep Jesus as Lord of our life. But what makes us overcoming? What, what makes us different than maybe just other Christians that, that, that know God Almighty? What makes us so much different is because we believe the entire Bible and the Bible says that if you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you become full of power, don't you? See, I had this situation, and I got a chance to share my testimony this morning, but I, 
I had this bad big old growth on my back that kept growing and growing and my wife said it's probably been growing for for six months and it, it started out like a little pimple but it got bigger and bigger and bigger and higher and higher right and I thought well it'll go away it'll go away well time passes by you know but God Almighty you know no matter how much time passes by God Almighty is sitting on the throne remember when Jesus was in his hometown just because somebody was sick just because Jesus walked in they didn't get healed just because he was there, did they? They didn't get healed until they asked for healing. See, every miracle's in the Bible, the, di the, the different people, like blind Bartimaeus, he cried out, and he said, Lord, have mercy on me. See, and, and I kept thinking, well, my back will heal, this thing will heal, this thing will be okay. But until me and my wife laid hands on it, cursed that thing, and, and believed God by faith that it was healed, Nothing changed. We tried everything in the natural, you know, putting hot compresses on it and taking a needle, trying to get this thing to whatever was wrong with it, and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't. But the moment we prayed, the minute we prayed, God got involved, and and like I say, that thing totally healed from top to bottom. And it's just that's how life is. Just because Jesus is in the room, that doesn't mean that 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 somebody's gonna get healed, does it? So you gotta. You always got to remember that God created these world, this world with his word. He said, let it be. So our words are very, very important, aren't they? When God says, let it be, the earth was formed. The world was formed. The oceans, the seas, the sky. So our words are very important. See, sometimes we think, well, maybe my prayers aren't that important. Maybe it's not necessary that I pray. Maybe it's, it's not necessary to to, to curse that infirmity or, or to bind it or to loose whatever. Maybe it's not important what I take into my window gates, my eyes. You remember this little shirt here says what? If your eye be single, then your whole body will be full of light. See how important our eyeballs? These are the windows to our soul, isn't it? See, our spirit gets born again the moment that Jesus comes and lives inside of us. Our spirits are full of the life of Jesus. So they're renewed, right? But what about our mind? Romans chapter 12 says what? I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And be not conformed to this world. See how important it is that we not conform? Because if you get conformed to this world, you're out of the will of God, aren't you? So we have to make sure that we, that we get stay in the will of God. So we have to be baptized with the Holy Spirit so that we have the power, so that we have the fire of God inside of us, that we have the word of God on the tip of our tongue, that no matter what's going on, we pray and we ask God to get involved with it. See, it's about having a really, it all comes back to that relationship, doesn't it? To have a relationship with God Almighty. But also the word says that we have to be what? Crucified with Christ. Jesus says we must take up our cross daily and follow him. We can't just live any way we want to live and say whatever we want to say and go wherever we want to go. We have to live a crucified life. You see, part of being living the crucified life is that we understand that if we sin against our father, if we do something wrong, that we have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus. And excuse me. And we go before the Father and we say, Lord, we have sinned against you. We I repent of this sin. I don't want to do that no more. I don't want to do things that are wrong in your sight. And we repent of our sin. Right. And we crucify our flesh and we don't continue to do the things that's wrong. See, Jesus told the woman caught in adultery, she said, now go and sin no more. See, that means stop what you're doing wrong and, and don't do it anymore. But we, if we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, we have the power, we crucify our life, and we have a healthy prayer life. How important is it to have a healthy prayer life? If you have the healthy prayer life and you're in your prayer closet and you're praying to the Father in the name of Jesus, and you believe that God Almighty lives inside of you, you're going to be victorious, aren't you? You're going to be an overcomer. 
you're going to be a devil chaser. You're going to be the light of the world. You're going to be that light that the Bible talks about on top of the mountain that's shining out, isn't it? And we want to be a light to the world, don't we? Did you look at all that Jesus did for us? He came to this earth. He died on a cross, rose again on the third day, and now he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he's coming back very, very soon. How, how many of you watch this, this mess going on over in Israel continuously, continuously with the evil that's going on and everything? But the Bible says it all has to happen. It's all going to be part. Jesus told us everything that was going to happen over there. And a lot of that stuff is they've got it pinpointed down to the very day that it was going to happen and how it was going to happen. But it's just the fact of the matter. You have to realize that Israel rejected the Lord God Almighty. The Israel, even though they're his children, even though they're his chosen people, even though God Almighty loves them so much, Israel rejected the Messiah. And there's a consequence for rejecting the love that God sent to them. And unfortunately, they're, they're paying the price of the consequence. But nonetheless, God loves them. Nonetheless, we're, we got to pray for them and we have to intercede for them. And we have to believe God for Israel uh, because, like I say, that's his holy land. That's the seed of Abraham that God made a covenant with. And and therefore, we have to you know do everything we can do to help them. But the repercussions are that whatever you sow, you're going to reap. And if you reject the Messiah, you, they don't have this, the name of Jesus. See, we don't realize how fortunate we are that we can go before the throne of God and say, Father, I'm in a situation. Father, I have a sickness. Father, I need this. We have the name of Jesus that if we ask anything according to God's will, he will do it. Israel doesn't have that benefit, do they? They don't have the name of Jesus. Now, thank God a lot of them are saved now. Thank God a lot of them have accepted the Messiah and, and they've asked Jesus to come into their heart and they're overcomers and they're baptized in the Holy Spirit and, 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 they, can, and they can speak to the problems and they can speak to the mountain. See, we can, we can say to the mountain, be thou removed and that mountain's going to be gone. If it's the will of God, it's gone. And that's the, the advantage we have as being Christians. And that's why it's so exciting being a Christian and living for God, knowing that we get to walk and talk with the master every single day, don't we? And that's that's the fun of it, that if you see the, the enemy poking his head out, Satan, in Jesus' name, stop. And, and the devils have to listen because of the name of Jesus. So we're overcomers because we have a healthy prayer life. We spend time with God Almighty. And there's nothing more fun than going to the prayer closet and listen to the Holy Spirit teach you about the Bible because he will teach you if you're listening. If you have that relationship with, with God Almighty, if you have a fellowship with him, if you love fellowship with him, you know, from time to time, no matter where you go, you run into secular music and things like that there and, and you listen to these different, maybe they're, they're singing gospel songs like How Great Thou Art or, or What a Friend We Have in Jesus. But you, but you know, there's a lot of difference between singing these secular songs and they're not really secular. They're, they're, they're worshiping God in a way, but it isn't the same. And the Holy Spirit will remind you, that's not the deep worship that I like when you worship me like, like what we just did here was, uh, you know, worshiping God Almighty. And there's a lot of difference between the secular music, you know, that, that, that some of these Hollywood guys can sing or, or ladies. And they sing the, the how great thou art, but do they really mean it from their heart, you know? And God knows if you mean it from your heart. So it's really, really important to be, be an overcomer <clears throat> and not to, uh, to walk in the flesh. So we're going we're gonna to get into the Word of God here real quick. Um, it says here in 1 John, that's one of the epistles of John, not the gospel. 1 John, starting with the 15th, start, well, 1 John, second chapter, starting with the 15th verse. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So God Almighty says that if you're going to be part of the world, you can't be part of him. See, you can't be part of the kingdom of darkness and part of the kingdom of light, can you? So if you love the things of the world, if you have the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, 
in the pride of life. Who knows what took the devil down? The devil got pride, didn't he? And when the devil seen how specially he was created, how beautiful he was made, how elegant he sang, when he seen the amount of the anointing that he had over the other cherubims and over the other angels, when he seen what he was, he left that go to his heart, didn't he? And he left it affect him to the point where he said, I'm going to take God off of his throne. And you see, that's what pride does. Anytime that you develop some type of a skill or, or whatever you're doing in life and you think, wow, I'm probably the best cook that ever lived or I'm, the, I'm probably the best mechanic that ever walked on this earth or I'm the best truck driver that ever drove. Anytime you're giving yourself self-glory, what are you doing? You're feeding yourself full of pride, aren't you? You feed yourself full of a world, the flesh, and the devil. You see, it's so much, that's why God says that he loves a man and a woman who are humble and contrite, who are totally dependent upon him. And it's important that in our daily life that we depend on the, the, the abilities of God in our life. If, if you're <coughs> good at anything, Give God the glory. Say, God, thank you for making me. A, you know, Saturday morning, we, we, re we did a lot of maintenance on this side of the uh, sanctuary here. And a couple of weeks ago, we did a lot of work on this side. But, you know, every time the gifts and talents and abilities that God gives me, I make sure I thank him for that. You know, I don't say, well, look at me. I can do this and I can do that. And I'm good at this. You know, and, and, and you know, you never want to take self-gratification, do you? You always want to give the glory to God. Because he's the one that made us. And he's the one that created us. But it says that love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you see, as we uh, go through <coughs> this, um, I'm going to grab my water here real quick. But as we go through life, we have to understand that the love of the world, what's, what's God saying that we should hate the world that he made? No. What God's saying about the if you have the love of the world if you love this economic system of how things run, if you love the fact that there's education systems and that educate our kids in, in secular humanism and, and to be God haters and all that, if you love the, the political nightmare that's down in Washington, D.C., if you, if you love the, uh, the, the education system, how how we took prayer out of school and how we teach little kids that there's no God and we teach them that they come from us. If you love the world system, hmm, then the love of the Father is not in you. What we're looking is that God wants us to love the way he made it. See, God was in charge of the earth, wasn't he? When God made the earth with Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve had a personal relationship with him. They, the Bible says that they walked with God in the cool of the day. They had a, that God was involved in everything. He wants to be the, the, the ruler. He wants to be the Lord. He wants to be the God. He wants to be the, the healer and the provider and the, the grower of the gardens and the, the grower, the, the giver of the water and the air and the everything. He wants to be totally, totally in charge of. And now when Adam and Eve sinned, they gave the world system over to the devil, didn't they? And you can see how good a job the devil has done with this political system. And, and it's very, very scary, except for the fact that we know God Almighty. Except for the fact that we can pray and say, Lord, you are the Lord of my life. You are the Lord of my family. You are the Lord of my job. You are the Lord of everything we have. And we give you honor and praise. And, you know... Uncle Bobby likes to read the Old Testament a lot. And, 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 and one of the things about the Old Testament, you'll see that the children of Israel continuously sinned against God. They did child sacrifices. They did all kind of evil things. And they continuously did wrong in the sight of God. And if you continuously as a nation do wrong in the sight of God, there comes a day when God says there's going to be judgment for that. Now you're going to have to Go through this here and we watched Israel. Other kingdoms would come in and take over the whole country all because they wouldn't obey God Almighty. See, they loved their world system more than what they loved God. So God says, if you're going to love that world system, you're my enemy. I, I don't want anything to do with you. So we see here 
in uh, in first John that if we love the world, that the love of God is not in us. So what do we do with the thoughts when they come? When the devil gives us these evil thoughts, because you see, the devil really don't have any power over you except for the fact he has the power of suggestion. He can say, well, get pick up your cell phone or get on get on get on your computer and and do this here and everybody knows that these cell phones if you better have full control over those things because trouble with mine is it pops news up as soon as you turn it on well, that news <clears throat> sometimes you read this article that article and you and you you want to kind of know what's going on in the world you want to see what's going on in israel and in russia and china and japan and you want to see what's going on but before you know it a lot of time goes by and I don't know about you all, but the Holy Spirit will say to me, say to me uh, that's enough of that, of that news time. Now it's time to spend time with me, right? So the question is, what do we spend more time with? With our cell phones and the news and whatever the entertainment is? Or do we spend time in the Word of God developing our faith? See, it's so important that, that we control our thoughts, that we don't let the bad thoughts, that we don't let the, the power of the suggestion. Remember, when you've got that little cell phone in your hand or the TV remote or whatever it is, that the eyes are the window of your soul. And if the eye is evil, the Bible says that the whole body is evil. If you can look at something bad, the whole body becomes evil. And we don't, we don't want that. If our body's evil, we're out of the will of God, aren't we? And now we're sinning. Sin separates us from God Almighty, doesn't it? The Bible says that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, righteous means doing the right thing, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much in the sight of God. Well, what happens if we're unrighteous? <clears throat> then our prayers don't avail much in God's sight. God doesn't hear them. God doesn't uh, want any parts of it. That's why it's so important that we keep ourselves See, the Bible says that God wants us to be without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we can present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. You see, it's so, so important because, you see, we just read in 1 John that the lust of the heart, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, it separates us from God Almighty, doesn't it? So the eye, the, the, our eyes and our ears are the gateways in, into our into our soul. So we have to we have to guard them. When we get born again, Jesus comes into our heart and He lives in our spirit. But but when Jesus is one with us, if we abide in Him and He abides in us, that's one part of three that's doing the will of God. Now your spirit wants to do the will of God. What does your soul say? Your soul says, well, I don't want to go to church. See, so many people nowadays, they want to sit home and they want to watch church on TV on Sunday morning. That's not what the book says to do, is it? It says, forsake not the assembling together as the manner of some are. You have to gather together. Why? Because there's power when two or more gather together in the name of Jesus. That Jesus says, I'm in the midst of them if there's two or more. So it's very, very important that we gather together. The Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the Scriptures, and the voice of Jesus all guide us to do the right thing. So we're going to flip back to the book of Timothy here real quick. Timothy, 2 Timothy it is. 2 Timothy, let's see where he's at. It says here, 2 Timothy Oh, boy, what happened to Timothy? He disappeared on me there. That's that quick. Okay, 2 Timothy. We're going to uh, start in the second chapter, the 15th verse. Timothy writes to us. Now, Timothy is actually writing this letter to the church of Jesus Christ. And Timothy says, study to show thyself approved of God. You want God's approval on your life? What do you got to do? Study to show yourself approved of God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You know, if we're ashamed of what we're doing, your faith ain't going to work because you don't have any faith because you, you, you're ashamed of what you're doing. You're living in sin. You're committing sin. You're doing things that are wrong in God's sight. So now you're ashamed of yourself. So when you go before the Lord God Almighty in your prayer closet, knowing that you're an, an unfaithful servant, 
It could just be that you're wasting time. And the Holy Spirit says, hey, study to show yourself approved of, of God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. See, when you go before the Holy Spirit, you want to go boldly before the throne of God. The Bible says, come boldly and that you, that you might obtain mercy before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And if you're doing everything you can do, you can go with that boldness. Now, that's not an arrogant boldness. That's an honorable boldness that we have the Holy Spirit with us. Lord, we're out here trying, trying to do what's right. We're trying to do what's good. Uh, if we see sin, we close our eyes. We run from it. We, we get away from it as fast as we can. But the Bible says that needeth, that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, the Bible says rightly dividing the word of truth. People will come to you and tell you, well, the Lord said for me to do this. Uh, a man will come to you that you work with and say, well, the Lord told me to divorce my wife. The Lord didn't tell you to divorce no wife. See how you got to rightly de de divide the word of truth. The Lord, they, they'll say, well, the Lord told me to, to do this, to do that. Are you sure it's the Lord? Because the Bible says if you rightly divide the word of truth, number one, you'll have two or three witnesses from the Holy Spirit, won't you? So when someone says the Lord told me to do this here or the Lord told me to do that or, you know, the, the Lord said you're supposed to be a missionary uh, to China. Well, did the Lord say that or didn't he? You see, you've got to rightfully, this is why you've got to know the word of God and spend time with the Holy Spirit so that you know the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes Dusty, he, he gets thoughts where he wants to change jobs. And I always say to Dusty, make sure you pray about it, Dustin, because you want to be where God wants you. But that's a tough one, isn't it, Dusty, when you want to change jobs and you, you pray about it and you say, Lord, where do you want me to at? But maybe, maybe God wants Dustin where he's at to be a witness. You don't know that, do you? Do you pray and spend time with God, have that relationship with God, have fellowship with God, and then the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you. And then you'll know from your inner witness when it's time to, uh, when it's time to maybe get another job or, or stay there and be where God wants you to be. But study to show yourself approved of God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, there's so many Bible verses. There's, there's just verse after verse. The Bible says, casting down imaginations and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Who thinks obedience is, is important? How important is it? It's very, very important, isn't it? Because God Almighty says back in the Proverbs, that obedience is better than sacrifice. King David, after he would do something bad, would slaughter a thousand lambs as repentance. And God finally told him, he said, look, obedience, one act of obedience outdoes all thousand lambs. It's important that we're obedient. And it's our job to make sure that we have the thoughts of obedience bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That means when that cell phone pops on, you do what? No, don't, don't look at what's going on in that cell phone because it's, it's programmed. Remember we just read in 1 John that the things of this world do not make God Almighty happy, do they? The things of this world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh makes God very, very, very unhappy. So be very careful I just downloaded a brand new Bible app yesterday again. So now every time I turn my phone on, it pops onto that Bible app now. It has a Bible verse pops up. It's got praise and worship music. So I finally got that little thing to where it's programmed the way I, the way I would think that God Almighty would want it to be programmed. But if, if you mess with any of those settings, it'll do just the opposite. It'll pop on, you know, news and all that other junk that we don't really... News is kind of a, a, a weird thing. I mean, there's nothing you can do about what's going on in Washington, but except for pray, and it gives you an opportunity to uh, to pray about what's going on in Washington. And I'm getting some weird feedback here, but but there's so many verses like I just read you, or, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imagination. Get control of your mind so that only you know what's going on in your mind. And if you catch an evil thought or something, Cast it down, take authority over it, and place the word of God in, play, in, in, in the place of it. See, the Bible says in Matthew 12, 34, that out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak, doesn't it? 
So whatever's inside of us, if you start talking to somebody, immediately what comes out of your heart is what you put in there. Psalms 1 and 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. See, a Christian's delight is in the laws of the world. The world doesn't want any, any laws, do they? That's why people vote liberal in, uh, come election day. They don't want any laws at all. They don't want laws about killing their kids, they uh, your abortions or whatever they call it. Uh, yeah, they don't want any laws. They just want to be able to do what they, they want to do. But the Bible says there in Psalms 1 and 2 that we delight in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. See, we're back to the medica- meditation. You must meditate to get it from your mind into your heart, into your spirit. And that's the way it's like I was talking to a, a man Saturday morning. You can't hardly go into your prayer closet and have the Holy Spirit speak to you if you don't have the Bible verses inside of your um, inside of your heart. Is that this little thing here that's making all this chatter? I don't know what's going on with it. But anyway, you have to have the word of God in your heart. The Holy Spirit is not going to speak to you if you don't have the word of God in your heart. So it's very, very important for us to to meditate on the word of God. The, the, the psalm says, in the law does he meditate day and night. Proverbs 4.23 says, keep your heart with all diligence. Now watch how important this is. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. See, guard what you put into your eyes and ears. If you're not careful what you put in your eyes and ears, there's where the issues of life. When the issues of life come down the, down the road and you need faith for healing or, or you need finances or you need God Almighty to do a miracle for you, what's inside of your heart? That's the first thing the Lord says. What's in your heart? What's inside of you? The issues of life come out it should be faith automatically right but faith cometh by hearing if you're not hearing the voice of jesus it's kind of tough to go on you know i mean if you haven't heard the word of god i mean it's one thing to depend on the logos but who knows the difference between the logos and the rhema the logos is the written word it's god's will for your life the rhema is when the holy spirit talks it back to you it's when god almighty speaks to you it's when jesus said to peter Peter, who do they say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That came out of Peter's spirit because the Holy Spirit had put that inside of Peter. And that's the rhema. And that's why it's so important to meditate on the word of God until that rhema rolls up out of your out of your heart. When you need healing and you go into your prayer closet, the, the, your spirit should just roll out 1 Peter 2, 24. It should roll out Matthew 18, 19, that Jesus destroyed all the works of the devil and healed all those that were oppressed of the devil. It should just pour out of you the way it did Peter because Peter didn't hesitate. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. The word of God has to pour out of your heart because out of the, out of, for out of your heart springs the issues of life. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Your heart without Jesus is deceitful above all things. What happens when you put Jesus into your heart? It's no longer deceitful, is it? It has the King of kings and the Lord of lords living inside you. That's why it's so important to be born again, to be filled with the Spirit, isn't it? It's because... We don't want a deceitful heart. So there's many, many Bible verses all throughout the Bible. We're going to read one more Bible verse, and then we're going to close with prayer. He, uh, it says Philippians 4, 8. Let's see. Oh, this is what the Holy Spirit wants us to, um, to meditate on. So we're talking about the thoughts that we have in our, in our heart, the th- thoughts that we have inside of our mind. And something's going on with this little microphone. I don't know what it could be, but it's something. It must be the wire or something. But anyway, we're going to read one more Bible verse here because we're talking about what we put in our heart, out of our heart, is what's going to come come out of us. Oh, the hand. What is it coming through, Steve? Is it coming through? Okay, we're in Ephesians 4. We're going to start with verse 7. And it says here in verse 7, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through 
Christ Jesus, the peace of God. Always remember, if you have a relationship with Jesus, you have peace. So no matter how this election goes, we have peace with God. We're his children, no matter how you look at it. We are God's children. Now, we have a responsibility to, to pray, to intercede, to fast, and to do everything God tells us to do, but we have the peace of God. Verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, we love true, don't we? Whatsoever things are honest, we love honest. Whatsoever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So as you're renewing your mind, think about the good things of the Lord. Think about the honest things. Jesus says, I, I can't lie. I'll never lie to you. If it's in the word of God, it's going to happen, isn't it? It's true. So think about these things, God says, which are pure and honest. And keep your mind renewed on the word of God continuously. So we're going to close in prayer right here, okay? So here we go. Father, we thank you so much for your word that you've given us this day. Father, we know that, Lord God, that you're always with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. And Father, you said to guard the windows of our soul, guard our eyes, guard our ears, Lord, so that only the good things can get into the inside of us. Because, Lord, your word declares that if our eye be single upon you, that our whole body will be full of you, that our body will be full of light. So, Father, we desire to know your word. We ask that you supernaturally put it inside of our hearts because your word says if we study to show ourselves approved of you, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, that you would fill our heart. And we ask you, Father, in, in the supernatural way, Father, fill each one of our hearts with the Holy Spirit and the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.